Welcome to the Shoot It Straight podcast. I feel like we haven't recorded in a minute, but we did last week. Yeah. It was a special it was a special episode. It's a special episode. By the time this one comes out, everyone will of course have known that we had Neil, the co-founder of Stick Mobility on, which was super fun. We're looking forward to having more, more guests. people, more guests mm-hmm. in the future. Very knowledgeable uh, movement specialist. So it was a good chat. Got yeah, to learn some yeah. stuff. You're really into the movement side. And I just, I find that his business model is really fascinating. Um, and their product is really cool and how they've scaled and all of that stuff. I mean, it's like just a lot of like right place, right time, but also like a really smart right. idea. I thought about this afterwards. Like, I wonder, because, you know, the sticks last so long. I wanted to ask him, like, did you intend them lasting this long or you wanted people to buy more sticks? <laughs> That's like, like how products are made He's like, damn, now. you've had that stick for like six years. Like, I was hoping you'd buy more by now, but like the original ones I bought are still good. So. No, I kind of, I thought about <laughs> that. I thought about like asking about that when I was, when I was asking about the quality yeah. of, of his product. And, you know, I think maybe that's for another episode, but his the quality it matters i think for them a lot more and so now they're focusing more of their business model on like the digital products and the trainings right. and all that kind of stuff which you gotta find a way to make more money well you gotta find a way to like to con- yeah to continue to scale right but well it's like that's why i always talk about like um one of my clients is talking about buying like um some dumbbells you know he has the adjustable ones which those things are get in your way they're ridiculous they also break and so he was looking at, you know, like a set of rogue dumbbells from five to 50 pounds is like, I don't know, it's like a thousand bucks to get that many dumbbells, yeah. I think. And he's like, oh my God, that's so expensive. I was like, well, they last forever. And like, you know, the brand like rogue, they probably got to think like, okay, well, this guy's never going to buy dumbbells from me again. So I got to, I got to get a pretty penny out of this sale. So, well, I mean, I, you don't want fitness equipment to break like when you're no. using it like even like the stick if you're doing something like where you're bending and something snapped on you that would be extremely dangerous and so right. that goes for like a lot of fitness equipment but yeah i mean it's funny like the perspective right of you know thinking buy a grand for an entire set of dumbbells to me i'm like that's totally worth it that's amazing might have been more but yeah right but it's like we think about when we started our gym back in austin during the pandemic and we were not making a lot of money and it was worth it to us to spend like 1500 bucks on scavenging like barbells and some weight plates and some yep. dumbbells. And that's what we did. I mean, we probably did end up spending like what two grand, but like how much did that pay for itself just in us being able to like use it and enjoy it for the year when and it became have it and, and train clients using right. that stuff. So obviously. yeah, I made the money back on that too. But, but outside of that, like, again, it's just like, well, it's just kind of dependent on what you find valuable because you know, same thing with golf clubs. Ah, uh, same thing. Did you, did I send you that video? Uh, at the end of today's episode, by the way, we're going to do a, um, I want to talk about this now. We're going to do a, what we're obsessed with or what we can't let go of this week. And I want everyone to definitely stay tuned for that, but remind me to come back to what I thought of in the beginning of this episode. Cause I'm going to bring that up later. You're probably going to have to remember that because I don't remember just, stuff like that. Just stay tuned. You might, um, might want to write that down or something. Yeah, no, but I sent <laughs> you this video of uh, this guy. This guy. <laughs> Sometimes I get the funniest golf reels and it was this guy standing there with his dog and he was like, my biggest fear is when I die, my wife selling my golf clubs for the amount I told her I paid for them. <laughs> yep. And that's the, that's it. That's the video with like some sad song in the background or something. That's a good <laughs> She's point. She's like, oh yeah, you can buy here. I'll sell this bag for a hundred bucks. No big deal. Oh. <laughs> no. That, that's a good one. I know. Well, like, and you know, it's funny. Like, I just hear you. Like, I stay downstairs and watch <laughs> like a episode of Yellowstone. I just hear you upstairs in your bedroom, like laughing out loud. And I'm like, oh, here we go. I look at my phone. It's like real sent to me. And you're up there, ah, <laughs> like. I'm laughing just thinking about the laughing. I, there's something about like relaxing at night and just being entertained. I, I TV is so much more boring than like looking at funny reels. Like people are so creative on the internet, and I, I either get like something sports, fitness related, or dogs. That's a hundred percent of the content that I have on my phone. That's it. Yeah, there's you, you got to dive. Else. You got to dive into a good show and put your phone away every once in a while. I. I'm just going to politely decline that right now that's just like what I'm into <laughs> and it's funny and it does make me, people are hysterical. These just like random people all over the internet that aren't 
They are funny. I mean, I, I mean, like the, I, I'm a prank guy. I like the prank videos. Yeah, you do. Those are always hilarious. Like the guy, um, he had a water gun, and he was behind um, the doors when you open up at the convenience store, and you get like a Gatorade or something cold, and he's like standing back there, and he's like shooting, <laughs> pew pew, and shoots him with a water gun. They're like, ah, that's so funny. Yeah, you, so you like lost your shit on that one. Oh that my god, like, that one's funny, but it's like okay, like. I mean, could you imagine like being that person? You open it up, you're like trying to figure out like which flavor of Gatorade you want. You get shot in the face with a water gun. Like it'd be so startling and ridiculous. Yeah, you did it over and over. And did over it all again. the time. That that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he made that noise. I'd be afraid someone would whoop your ass, but I think it's a little staged. But it was funny. It had to be. It just because after a certain number of those, those, some of those guys were rough. And they would yeah. probably lit some people up. Yeah, they weren't like if soccer moms, like which soccer moms were probably more dangerous than some of those guys. But you know, yeah, you got yeah, <laughs> watch out for like some Karen moment. Anyway, I think this is a good lead into like what we're talking about today, which is um, just the ability to have more autonomy in your training, in your fitness, in your goals, and to like add play to your life. We're just going to talk a lot about sort of what it's. The nuance between following a program and follow, having structure and, you know, wanting to achieve your goals and also, like, be able to live your life. I think that this has been a topic for me, like, with my one-on-one -on -one clients that I'm still working with and just also what I'm hearing in this space in general, just the vibe is, like, optimize this, optimize sleep ice bath protocols, mm -hmm. you know, meditate 17 times. Like, it, I mean, it's getting to the point where people are like, I don't even have enough hours in the day to do all this like mindfulness wellness bullshit that's out there. Mm -hmm. And so we've like overcorrected. I feel like this is kind of like what we do in our world, like this pendulum where we're like lazy, not eating right. Nobody's working out, whatever to like, there's studios everywhere and fitness everywhere. And all of these scientists now that are saying, do this, do this, do this, do this. So now there's like no in between. And we're like forgetting to have fun. And I'm not saying like, I don't think it's about going to the bar and we're, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the nuance and I think this will be a good discussion, but just helping people navigate through that and how specifically too, like with our programs, how you can follow a program and also still have some flexibility in your life. Right. So I think where that whole thing get, gets crazy for people is then they turn into the all or nothing mentality, right? Like if I can't do, if I can't optimize everything, if I can't sleep this amount of hours, if I can't meditate, if I can't you know, cold plunge, if I can't do all this stuff, like in for in, in the golf world, like if I can't do my, my mobility work, if I can't do my strength work, if I can't do my speed work, um, if I can't do all my putting drills, blah, 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 like, you know, list goes on and on. It's like, well, then why, what am I doing? Like, why, why should I do any of it? Um, so yeah, I think that's a good point is like, where we figure out like, it's not an all or nothing game, you can have some flexibility in what you're doing in the gym and in your life. Um, but you know, there's, there's nuance to all that stuff. Yeah. And so I think like a good way to start talking about this is like even just going through our programs and how to follow a program and what it means to follow a program, but also have less structure and rigidity. Um, right. And for people that are maybe hesitant to purchase our programs or start a workout routine, how does one, let's just kind of go through like a few different avatars of people. So like a beginner, a person who's brand new, who might be completely overwhelmed by the idea of a program and all of the things they're reading online and the diet stuff and the protocols on the ice bath right. and the sauna. How do you talk to that person and help them decide where to start? So like if you're just starting, I think most people's lowest hanging fruit is usually like strength training and people want to see progress and like that's usually what keeps them engaged now that that's what will take them into the, the next step right so um i always do talk about strength training um this reminded me like years ago when i was an area fitness manager and at washington sports clubs up in up in dc and it was like you know i was speaking to i can't remember how many it was 20 or 30 or so like brand new trainers and that was one of the things like hey you know what's the number one thing i should be working on with with my clients and i was like hey the number one thing that's going to keep people coming into the gym is like a tangible result something they can see they're not going to be able to see how they look different or this or that, like right off the bat, but they're going to see like week by week that they're getting stronger. 
So if someone that's brand new, want to focus on strength training and for our programs and specifically, you know, I program, there's, there's five written, I like to put it this way to, to people, cause I do get this question a lot. Like, Hey, there's five pro days that you have programmed just on, just when you look at it on paper, but if you like, you dive in deeper, you realize that and if you can understand like what you're reading, it's like just on paper, like Tuesday's not that, not that big a deal. Like on my programs, like day two is just a mobility day. It take you 15 minutes and it's not going to be very intense. <clears throat> Um, the fifth day and, and the fourth, the fourth day is like not super intense. And the fifth day is like strip conditioning. So <clears throat> I tell people like when we're just getting started, if you can knock out like those first two days of the, like the, the workouts one and three, like the two biggest workouts of the week, those are like my, you know, most foundational ones that are, that are in the program. Those are like, you know, the, the hierarchy of needs, if you will, like those are going to be like the first two that I want you to knock out because they're the most strength focused. And like, as a beginner, that's where you need to start because that's going to get you more mobility, power, and and strength, of course. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. And I think um, you, you nailed it with the strength training piece. I think people, when we've talked about this before, want to focus on the body stuff. And a lot of people, of course, come to, especially beginners, people that are new or signing up for the gym for the first time in a long time, they want to lose weight. They want to lose fat. That's like number one goal from 99% of people more than likely. Right. And while that can totally happen and will happen over time, getting stronger and building more lean mass and improving your metabolism, improving all of your biofeedback markers, like all of right. those things will totally improve being able to have those real results that are happening to keep you coming back and build that momentum, not right. so much motivation. Cause we know that that also wanes for beginners after they're like always very excited for the first couple of weeks. And then it's like, well, whatever on to the next. Right. But if you're getting stronger in the gym, it's a really cool feeling. Mm -hmm. We've both experienced that our, ourselves, like new or not. It's like, it's very cool to see lifts going up and, sh you know, pain going away, injuries being less, like all of that kind of stuff. Right. I mean, and I even went as far as, you know, cause like when in my, in my past like career, um, as a regional, uh, fitness manager, like my job was to make sales and make the company money. Like that's, that was a big deal. Right. And so this presentation I gave to these trainers was like kind of about retention, like how you're going to keep these clients like actually coming to see you and you had to, you got to make them happy. Right. And yes, they want to lose weight. They came to see you because they have these body composition goals, but what can you actually show them on paper in a month from now, what you've actually done for them? Yeah. And you can be like, Hey, day one, remember you couldn't even squat. You know, we're on day 30 now. You're squatting, holding that. And I said, this one lady, um, she had a dog named, uh, what was the dog's name? Ruby. And she was scared to like hold anything heavy. And I had to convince her that this kettlebell weighed as much as her dog that she didn't mind carrying around. And I was like, now you can squat with Ruby, you know, and you couldn't squat at all. So like she, you know, her eyes lit up, like that made her really happy. So like, that's just <clears throat> another way that you show people that you're getting them results, um, but also like, keep them coming. And so like as a beginner, that's a really good place to start. Like strength is always like where you want someone to start. And then we layer all the other stuff on because I would see trainers. Someone came in and said, Hey, I, I want to lose weight. I want to look like this. Right. So it's like, okay, let me, they think they, they, I'm gonna give them what they want. They want a bunch of cardio because they think that's, what's going to help them lose weight. Right. They didn't lose the weight. They didn't get any stronger. They canceled and they quit. Yep. And then my job was made harder because my job was to keep the company running totally. and with, financially yeah. so um it was like you just want to help everything in the company and the person and the trainer and everyone involved well i want to talk about retention actually because retention is important from the client standpoint too and yes we've both been on the business side and we know that retention is important and for those that don't know mm -hmm. retention is just a matter of are you keeping the clients that are signing up with you and, and for how long mm -hmm. is it 30 days is it six weeks on average at a gym what is it it's literally three months or something like that I think that's like, yeah, like, yeah, like the global gym. Yeah, yeah. People don't stick around that long. Now the people that do end up with a personal trainer stick around a lot longer. There's people that end up, yes, they do. And so again, from a, from a program perspective, back to just like following a program and for anybody like starting a fitness routine on the client side, you want retention. You want to stick with the program. We as coaches want our clients to stick with the program because it's something you and I preach all the time. It's like, there isn't a 30 day fix. Like, again, there will be things that you see from day zero to day 30 for sure. Mm -hmm. But the stuff that really works is the boring shit that you do month after month after month after month. And right. as, as 
as mundane as it can be on, on paper sometimes. If you're just program hopping or going from one thing to the next and you're spinning your wheels and this is you who's been doing this over and over and over again in your life, you might want to just pick a program and stick to it. Mm-hmm. Because I think that's another thing um, aside from the all or nothing mentality is the, well, life got in the way. I had to take off a week or two. And so therefore I'm, I'm done with that and I'm just going to quit and, mm-hmm. and I'll start over again probably a year from now or whenever it's convenient and things aren't as crazy, quote unquote, or whatever. Right. right? As opposed to just like keep going and stick it out and do what you do, what you can mm-hmm. do what you can to kind of keep plugging along and consistency, just kind of showing up for yourself and expect it to take a little bit longer than six weeks or two months or whatever. Like it's going to be lifelong change, which is also why making crazy dramatic changes specifically for like a beginner avatar, but really for anybody, like it's pretty hard to retain people when you flip their world upside down and change how they eat and working at working out zero days to six days a week and all the crazy right. stuff. So that's cool for beginners. I think another avatar that I'd like to talk about. So we've, we've talked about the beginner person, the newbie who's coming in. Um, now is the person that um, maybe they've been working out for a while, or maybe this is a new person too, but this avatar is a person who's just, they're just busy. They, they're maybe a new mom. Maybe they just got a promotion at work. And so they're very job focused. Maybe like, again, this person is maybe where fitness and nutrition isn't their number one lifeblood which for most people that's true. Mm -hmm. But again, they want to maintain their fitness or improve it a little bit. They want to get better in their health. How does that person who maybe only has literally their three 30 minute windows a week or three 45 minute windows a week, how do they have success on a program or fitness routine? Like on my program? Well, yeah, you can talk about your program, but like I would just say, you know, like, for our program, one thing that's important and I think for people to, to know, and I think this goes for not just this avatar, but maybe if you're just having a season of life or a couple of weeks where things are a little bit busy, is to remember like there are five days programmed on the lift heavy swing fast. You just talked about how three of those days are like the primary strength days. So for one, that person should focus on the big, the lowest hanging fruit and the thing that's going to be moving the needle the most, which are right. the three lift days. Breaking that down further is like, you don't necessarily have to complete the whole workout every time. Yes, as it's written, you want to definitely like look at that and try to do the best that you can. Maybe you're, maybe you're doing, uh, you know, not doing the cool down movements for a few minutes at the end, or Mm -hmm. maybe you're doing your mobility movements before you even get in the car to go to the gym so that you're like already warmed up something like that, or you're walking, you're walking to the gym to get your heart rate up and you're maybe not doing as much of the mobility, having that autonomy and just being able to think through that. I know that that's hard. It's that come, that does come with experience, which is why I think that's not necessarily a a thing to do as a beginner. I think it is helpful as a beginner to have structure and to follow a template because you just don't know, Mm -hmm. but as you learn your body and you understand it's okay that I think people get really caught up in like, if something is written in an in the app or on a piece of paper that it's like, well, this is like, it has to be done in this way. Right. It's okay to like not do three sets and just do two. Like it it doesn't mean that it's not the all or nothing. It doesn't mean that you won't have success. It doesn't mean that you can't lift heavier the following week. You can look at a program and, and kind of look at it. Okay. How can I tackle this today? How can I have success with following a program and structure it in my week in a way that works best for me? And maybe on a weekend day, maybe you have a little bit more time as opposed to during the work week. And that's when you can give yourself a full hour or like really work on your mobility a little bit more that day and do like more of a warm up or more priming or whatever. But I'd love right. to like hear your thoughts on that too. Yeah. I mean, so, well, lucky for people who join our program and our community is we have a platform called Circle where if someone ever comes up, comes across issues like that, that's, you know, not just a one off or something like that they should uh, write it down the, in, on, the, on the platform, on the forum and, and get some feedback. And I'd be more than happy to kind of go in between each person's like individual needs and try to figure out what would be the best uh, course of action for however busy they are. Um, but you're right, like, I mean, and also like the way I've always written workouts is that 
did I say hierarchy of needs earlier? I'm going to use that again. So like, um, you put your more important, like exercises first, like when you're, um, less fatigued, you know, it's at the, you're fresh beginning of the workout. So like, you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't skip those and jump to the end, right? Yeah. Like I would do the yeah. workout in order and just stop where you stop. Like if you got a hard 30 minute stop, do as much as you can follow the prescribed rest periods, still like do it how you're supposed to do it. Bring the intensity, probably take the intensity even higher because you're, yeah. you're, time frame is shorter and when it, and see how far you get yes. and when time is up time you got to go totally um wherever that is i don't I, you know if you get to the finisher you know because now I'm, i program finishers in there and there's three rounds program sometimes there's five um in, in the new in-season uh programming that's coming out on monday um if you get a round in and your alarm clock goes off and you gotta get in the shower and take the kids to school or whatever it is like that's it no, I'm glad That's that you fine. brought that up. I'm so glad that you, yeah. By no means are we saying cherry pick workouts, which right. means, oh, I like this movement. I'm going to do this one. Like yeah. if I had to cherry pick a program workout, I would do all leg movements and I would probably never do upper body. Um, but and I you'd think be unlike every other guy. At I, the think, gym. I think every, yeah, I was just about to say every dude is inverse to that. Um, maybe I like it because then I can have all the equipment that's like lower body to myself. Mm -hmm. No, but it's not about cherry picking and choosing movements that you like or enjoy the most by all means. That's like, it's cool. And you should enjoy your workouts, but you definitely, again, want to follow a program that's, that's balanced and programs have a lot of thought that go into them. I know that people might not know this that aren't in the space, which is totally fine. When you buy a program, your job is to do the program and not think about it. That's the beauty of a program. Your job is to pay the money and my okay. job is to spend all the time. It's to spend the time. That, that, that's what, that's what, that's our, uh, that's our uh, transaction right there. Totally, totally, <laughs> totally. So by by no means is this like saying, you know, well, yeah, look at this program and like modify the fuck out of it. No, that's not what we're saying. But yes, definitely go in the order of the of the workouts for sure. Um, your compound lifts and things like that that are, that are in the beginning that are the most taxing. Um, and if you're finding yourself continuously skipping a certain day, be it oh, I'm always skipping those that lower body exercise day or the upper or like I don't like doing any for me like if I'm skipping um I'm skipping things that have to do with like the cable machine I just I probably yeah, I mean, shouldn't do that so and then like in our program like to get real technical what I would want someone to do like and this is like you know again like I don't want like if if you were to do Monday's workout and you don't work out again till Friday I technically would want you to do Wednesday's workout yeah not Friday's right but again, we we're talking about the autonomy and like, it's still fine. If it's happening one week, that's fine. That's what yeah. I'm saying. If you're continuously skipping that Wednesday workout, that, that second workout of the week is constantly dropping, then we might need to restructure the days that you're working out. Another technique that I think can help people that sometimes is beneficial is splitting the workout into two parts. Mm -hmm. Some, some people, I mean, a lot of people now have home gyms, so maybe you have the capability of doing that a little bit more easily if you work from home, or at least can maybe you go to the gym in the morning and then you do your 15 minutes of mobility in the afternoon, or you do like your accessory cable work mm -hmm. or your, you know, stabilization on the cables or whatever mm -hmm. later in the day. Um, that could be another way to just effectively manage your day for people that don't necessarily have like, you know, depending on, how far away you live from your gym. Sometimes it's a two hour commitment, just going and traveling and showering and doing the whole thing like mm -hmm. for 90 minutes. So splitting it up into a couple sessions can also just be like another tool or tactic that people can use and still get in the amount of, or even the next day, maybe you're bl splitting those three days up into four days, but they're shorter days or something yeah. like that. Just That's going to be kind of like my plan. Um, when I, when we actually finally get some good weather around here is I'll probably start doing, like the first half of my in-season workout because so I follow along the, the program too that that everyone else does um and I um I want to do like my I'll probably do my heavy lifts in the morning and then if I'm gonna go play golf like you know I'll probably I'll come home and eat um work for a little bit and then play in you know, probably in the afternoon and I'll probably do like the finisher that I wrote in there and probably with a little bit more mobility or something um like a like a pre-round like golf warm-up yep um and do like my finisher and then go play golf and i also have the convenience of you know i live 10 minutes walking away from the golf course so it'd be like my warm-up workout and then i'll go play and that'll take me you know 15 minutes to do that whole warm-up and everything and or and that's also like the finishing circuit that i put in the in-season program yeah. too so yeah that might be that might be something i do it's always you know the the two workouts a day is like for me it's like oh i gotta shower twice 
Well, in the summer, but, we were going to shower. But the summer, like, if I go play golf, like, yes. I'm going to be covered in sunscreen. I got to shower anyways. Yes. Yes. So. We're going to be sweating on the golf course no matter what. So I think it's double shower day is coming very soon. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's good. I think that's hopefully that really helps people because, um, again, there's nuance. And I think it's important for people to know that writing programming for the masses is challenging because everybody is different, you know. But again, you know, our goal is to make this affordable for a lot of people and we want to be able to help people mm -hmm. because doing one-on-one -on -one training while as awesome and effective as it is, like that means that an hour of your day is taken up just to help one person. And we really want to help more people. Right. And so again, that's why we offered circle. We have definitely ways to get in touch with us as coaches when it comes to any fitness and nutrition type questions so that people can ask and you know, when you ask a question on there, somebody else probably has the same mm -hmm. question. A lot of the same things do come up. And so it's important for us to, um, you know, hopefully help people along the way to make the program accessible. Yeah. And I mean, I, I catch myself, you know, now, you know, that we are doing so much and like trying to do so much um, that it almost has like, to me, like people ask like individual questions and we're giving individual answers like out to like, and I want everyone to be able to read it. So that way it can apply to you as well. But like, it definitely has, I mean, we're only charging 29 bucks a month and we're like providing almost like a personal training experience to a lot of these people. Yes. Um, so I, you know, we're doing a lot and it's awesome because nothing like that is, is out there, especially in this, in, in this golf space, um, where people are like, are still like trying to figure out what the hell golf fitness is and, they're bastardizing it all over the place. So, I mean, it's, yes. it's, it's, uh, and, and to each their own, like, you know, if I, I obviously think the way I do is the best and there's going to be someone out there that thinks the way they do it is the best. And that's kind of the, the joy of the world that we live in. So, yeah. Well, speaking of that, I think that'll lead me to our final avatar person actually of, of, <laughs> what did you say? Bastardizing. <laughs> Was that the right word? Should we edit that? No, I no. think it's okay. a great, good. I think it's a good word. <laughs> um, Cause I think that the industry as a whole sometimes just is. And our last person avatar is the person that needs to do every protocol out there and every wellness thing out there and everything that Huberman says that to do and whatever his protocol is. It's crazy to me, like how quickly people just think that they can latch on to this 10 step process or this person's morning routine or this person's wind down routine, plus all the fitness, plus counting your macros, plus, 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 plus. And I work a full time job and I have a full family. We're, we're missing the point. Like, and so this avatar isn't necessarily the beginner. These people are not obsessed. The beginner is not obsessed with all the things. Yeah. They don't know the things, the person mm -hmm. who's super busy, they're doing their other things. Like they have other like life things going on that they're focusing on. These people are, you know, just out there on the Instagrams or consuming the things and maybe they're really passionate about fitness and health. And I think that that's totally fine. And like I'm preaching to just people that are also in our space and our bubble a little bit too, but also the people who are like curious that are thinking that if they lean on these things that, that that'll lead them to better health. I cannot stress enough to people like that at the end of the day, as much as we'll preach getting good sleep and eating good food and doing good for your body and strength training and prioritizing your health is a hundred percent true. It cannot get lost with not having any social life or any fun or being playful or removing like any fun thing whatsoever and not having even time to like, just like fuck around. Like people mm -hmm. are getting so wrapped up in some of this stuff. I was like talking to a client that was like, well, I'm consuming these podcasts and I'm tracking my macros and I'm trying to do a diet. And, but, but she's also like a super busy working professional, like a total bad bitch, but like very overwhelmed with like all of the protocol things and the wellness things. And I'm like, when's the last time you like spontaneously went out for the weekend with your partner and just said, fuck it. And didn't do your workouts for like three days, like just a few days. I'm not saying like take off the gym for six weeks and just like go have at it and eat your weight and like ice cream and whatever. Mm -hmm. But part of health is like having flexibility and having autonomy, like to bring it full circle is to like, it shouldn't stress you out. I think that's an important thing that I'm trying to drive home is like, we don't want to create workouts and programs that stress you out more and it shouldn't. 
yes, learning something new or learning a new movement might be uncomfortable and like things might be a little bit harder or take you a little bit longer in the beginning, like whatever. But like, we don't need to be feeling stressed out if we're missing one workout or cutting 15 minutes of a workout off or, right. you know, choosing instead of being with our family, like I got to go do this, listen to my podcast and get my steps in. It's like, what the fuck? Like, right. no, there needs to be a little bit of like, have the fun, relax. Again, some people need more coaching to get up and move their ass, but some people need to scale back. Like for progress for some people is like being okay with like, letting things slip a little bit and mm -hmm. having the flexibility and being okay to like go off the path like the worst thing to happen so i always tell people i'm like what's the worst case scenario here right what's the worst case scenario if you take an extra day off at the gym what's the worst case scenario if you don't get your ten thousand steps today mm -hmm. or whatever it is right so i just kind of wanted to highlight that because it's been coming up a lot and i think it's important for people to remember that health is also just a lot more than the things that are written on paper and what the research says and all of that stuff. Like health is also about having fun, and mm -hmm. being playful and whatever. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, I do have to admit that since I've transitioned to training just golfers over the past few years, I see less and less of that because golfers typically are able to um, go play golf and uh, they, and a lot of them like to, you know, have a beverage while they're out there. So um, I think golfers um, are, are, you know, built to like go out there and, and cause they love golf. You know, it's, they do have fun and they, and it's usually, and a lot of times it's followed by some kind of social event or, um, things like that. So that is what a good part about the game is. Um, but yeah, to your point, like, you know, people are just overwhelmed by the information that's out there, all the wearables, um, so many things like, you know, if you listen to David Goggins or, or one of those right. guys is like, I don't give a fuck. I don't take any days off. I work 20 hours a day. I don't give a shit. You know, that's like, that's, you know, that that's, it's awesome. Good for them. But you know, um, yeah, like it doesn't take, you don't have to do that to be successful in the gym. Like you can right. be a normal human too. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's permission to like do you sometimes. And I think, again, everyone's different. Some people need to level it up mm -hmm. in their fitness world and drink less booze on the weekends playing golf. And some people need to like do drink more booze. <laughs> like, I don't know. Or do like have a little bit more fun. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's just about like, again, doing what's best for you. So mm -hmm. shall we end our podcast with our first ever what are we obsessed with this week or whatever we're going to call this little series that we're going to do that's pretty fun what are we obsessed are with this week obsessed so what are you obsessed with this week maybe not obsessed if somebody has a better title than obsessed or a better idea let us know it's but a hundred percent a working title um without copying off of some of the other cool ones that are out there but basically just there's a topic of the week that keeps coming up that we want to elaborate on whether it's golf fitness or otherwise so I think mine kind of goes into both. Um, so a popular trend, and I know it's a joke. Like I'm not trying to sit here and, and give these guys shit because I know they're joking. Or at least I think they are. But um, it's this obsession with like impressing the cart girl on the golf course as if the cart girl gives a shit how far you hit the golf ball or what you look like. Um, so, you know, there's memes or there's guys that make videos or, or all this kind of stuff it's like oh the cart girl pulls up so like yeah i mean maybe you do get nervous like you know because like it's embarrassing you're about to hit a bad shot and then an extra person's watching and it happens to be a female but i gotta admit like i'm trying to think of the last time i saw a cart girl i'm pretty sure the last one i saw was was she at south lakes here in jinx and i'm pretty sure she's she was like a high school girl um so it's like calm down bros like they're they're not even of age like the girls you're out here trying to Im impress and i just air quoted impress if you're listening to us um and then like and then like I, I don't get it they're out there just to do a job but here we are like thinking that we need to get in shape or hit a bomb like you know change your club out instead of hitting an iron you need to hit your driver because the cart girl pulled up and you're trying to impress her like i don't know it's just it's just blowing my mind it, it comes up a lot of like that's what we go into the gym to train for golf fitness for is to look good or to impress a female who's out there trying to do her job. So I don't know, like that's just taken away from what I want to, that I think that golf and, and training for golf in the gym is all about. It's about performance and not just being a jackass and, and trying to impress the cart girl who probably doesn't want to talk to you and you should probably tip her well, especially if you're going to like try to hit on her too, like you should tip her even more. Um, I have 
so many things to say. But, but I, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have said that. But like you know, the girl's just trying to do her job. Get your beer, tip her, tell her to have a nice day instead of holding her up. Yeah, she doesn't uh, care at all. She doesn't care that you that she you just hit care. a that you hit a drive and you know probably probably aren't that good of a golfer anyways. But you know because the real golfers out there, all they care about is playing golf. But uh, that that's just my little like, little peeve that keeps coming up. And I also don't like that. I think what aggravates me the most is that they're, they're they're making a joke about this business, and it's something I'm I take seriously. Like I want people's human performance to be um, a priority in their life, and not as this fucking joke that hey, we're trying to impress this high school cart, cart girl, That's and right. and they're not all high school girls. And I know there's like some places out there, like there was a place in Florida. Um, I never went to it, but I think it's where people have their bachelor parties and like the, and the cart girls are like strippers and they come out there and they do the whole thing. Like go there and do that. Like that's the spot for you. Not your local public course where the girl is doing her summer job, trying okay. to make a few bucks for college or high school. I think we're good. We're Done. good. That was good. That was good. Thank you for sharing that. With everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's just like everything else in this industry. It's for clicks and likes. Right. And it's it's catchy on the algorithm like whatever that's really all it is the fitness industry is full of that guys no no one's looking at you at the gym that are females it's guys on guys all the time like girls this is permission for you out there to like literally give zero fucks because they are not looking at you they are looking at each other and looking at who can out bench each other and out like big dick each other it's what the culture is and it's the same thing on the golf course it's the same exact thing you are not giving a fuck what this girl thinks you are caring what this guy thinks that's maybe a good golfer or whatever. Like you guys are out there impressing each other with y'all's egos. It's very funny, but I, I appreciate you bringing that up because it's just a thing that's in the industry right now. It's just these clickbaity things that are, you know, they're going to get people likes and they're going to get people to sign up and click on his profile and whatever. And like, who knows his programming is probably really not that good or whoever's posting about that stuff. And I don't even remember. I don't even, it, it, there, there's multiple, like this, well, is, what a, this saying, is a thing. What I'm saying is, the he avatar, right. whoever is posting about it is probably doesn't have a really good product. So that's probably why they're posting that stuff. Yeah. The thing that I'm obsessed with this week, I'm just going to roll with it is ice cream. That's so basic. I know that like, I'm not going to even talk about it for that long. That's just it. Ice cream's having a moment for me. I haven't, um, we've, we've had ice cream every single week now for like a while. And this is something that's kind of new for us. But did, did we in DC? Florida, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, we were in Florida. We went to this place called Jenny's Wits. It was something that we did multiple times a week because that's when we were training. I was eating like 2,800 calories a day. So it was like not a big deal to eat Wits. And we used to go every day. Yeah, For we went like we five went times day. a week. Every day, yeah. Because they would do a flavor of the day, which was like totally great marketing, like so good. But mm -hmm. ever since then, we've kind of been like on a consistent ice cream cadence. And I just want to shout out to ice cream because it's fucking good. Shout out to ice cream. Shout out just, to ice cream. Just ice cream. I just does it, I want to know, like, do people go through phases in the way that, like, we kind of sometimes go through phases, but do people go through phases of, like, places that they go out to eat or places that they really like? I think... Oh, I, I would phase Olive Garden every afternoon. I know. I, I Now I'm, like, feeling like <laughs> we are getting to that, like, we're getting older because it's, like, you do go to the places that you know that are good. Like, you're just done putting up with the latest catchy bullshit thing. Like I want to go to a place that's, that I know is really good. And like, we've been doing good about that, but specifically with our ice cream in Tulsa, we've been going to Andy's. It's so good. If you have an Andy's where you're at, you must go. It's a Midwest chain. Like they're in like Kansas, Oklahoma. I think there's some Texas chain locations, yeah, maybe in Dallas. Yeah, Andy's probably. custard is so bomb. We've been going every single week and I don't ever want to stop. And okay. they have an app. That's it. I just wanted to inform the people. The people need to know. The app is Andy's. good. The app is good. You get your points and for your $8 like ice cream. Are we whatever. going tonight? Yeah, let's go. Okay. After sushi. It's, it's great after sushi too because you get like the saltiness of the sushi, sushi and you get the sweet cream. and stuff, the ice cream. Yeah. So hopefully that's um, a little more fun than the one than you're, than you're obsessed with this week. But I like then, then my I like Then my rant. It was, just, it was just hot and steamy. So I went down the other way of just ice cream. To end on a good yeah trip. i kind of end up getting fired up about it because it's just like no, don't, 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 don't 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 bastardize our industry can i use that word again did that work like it's like fine that? we're going all we're going hand this episode um but with that i think that's enough we've talked a lot about our programs lift heavy swift swing fast mm -hmm. is live af it's been out for five six weeks now we've got about 100 people in the in the program over and 100. growing over 100 we're getting more and more people every day which is really really cool to see 
Um, so find us on CodyWestGotGolf.com. Um, you can easily access our programs there. And of course, Cody West got golf on Instagram. And that's it. YouTube. And the YouTubes. Our YouTube channel has literally thousands of videos of movements. But also you can find our, if you're a listener of the podcast, for sure hit up our YouTube channel as well. Um, if you want to see our faces and follow along. Cool. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye.